Hey guys, it's Tyler. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In fall 2019, I took Bio 101 with Dr. Scott Poting and Dr. John Wagner. And today I wanna to sit down and review the course. Today, I wanna to give a summary of the course, talk about the difficulty of the course, the quality of the course, and just general tips on how to succeed. I hope this video gives you a good idea of what to expect from Bio 101, and I hope you succeed in the course. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So Bio 101 is first level introductory biology at Penn. The course fulfills sector five, which is living world. Related courses include biology 102, which is second level introductory biology, and Bio 121, which is advanced introductory biology. Biology 121 actually covers all of the things in Bio 101 and Bio 102 in one semester. Bio 121 is for students that are more confident in their bio skills, but if you're doing it for a pre-med requirement, you may wanna to go to the career services website and kind of look over how many courses you have to take because if you do take Bio 121, from what I understand, you will end up taking more courses overall. So if you're taking it for pre-med, you may wanna look over it. Summary of class structure. So Bio 101 is composed of a lecture component and an integrated lab, which does experiments on our lecture material. Typically other science courses at Penn have completely separate labs, um, but for some reason Bio has an integrated lab, which is cool. Here is our lecture schedule, so you can get an idea of what we went over during the semester. You'll probably see a lot of topics that you've gone over before in high school, and that's kind of how the course works for the most part. We kind of just go in depth on things that we already learned in high school. Um, while I took the course, there were no required recitations. We did have a weekly optional recitation. Um, I didn't attend them, I think because of scheduling conflicts or I was just being lazy one of the two, but the recitations were optional and they were more like big office hours in a way. There weren't recitation worksheets that you had to do or anything like that. It was more you come to recitation and the two professors were there and you could just ask them questions and kind of bounce off of them. So grading in Bio 101 was based off of a point system. The most points that you get were 500 points. 300 points came from the class component 175 points came from the lab component, and the final 25 points came from the class participation. The class component was made up of our exams. There were three exams and a final in this course. Each exam was worth 100 points, and our lowest exam grade was dropped. The lab component was made up of lab worksheets that we did during our experiments, and also pre-lab quizzes that we had before our weekly labs. The class participation portion was made up of just in-class questions that we answered through, what's it called? Um, so here is how our final grade was calculated. Our exam grades were normalized to an arbitrary mean of 73% and um, there was a z-score of 15. Um, I'm not sure why they made it so complicated, but this is what they did for some reason. I'm sure they have great reasoning for it, but that's how they did the final grade. Also, the grading scale in this course is a little bit different. I'm gonna put it right here so you can see it, and yeah. So that's the class structure. Difficulty. All right, so this class was moderately difficult. Nothing outlandish, but it did feel difficult at times. Um, I give it a 7 out of 10 on difficulty. I feel that the difficulty came mostly in the wording of test questions. The questions were always worded in a different way than we were taught it. And a lot of times there were mistakes that made it even harder to like actually understand what was going on in some of the exams. But the wording of the questions were like very particular, making it necessary that you know every single detail and background processes going on, which I guess it's understandable for a biology class, but I think that's the biggest thing that made this course difficult, is having to know not only what you were taught, but also having to know background processes that are going on that you weren't directly taught, but in a way you might be able to guess it's happening. That's the part of the class that I thought was most difficult. Here are the distributions for all of our exams, so you can get an idea of how students usually perform. Switching gears and going to labs. Um, with labs, some labs were more difficult than others. 
the thing is there was always a TA that was there to help. So whenever I got stuck in a lab, I would just get my TA, Dr. Stauber, to come over and he would answer any questions I had and get me back on track. So labs weren't difficult in themselves. The pre-lab quizzes, I didn't find them that difficult, but I actually did spend a lot of time on them. There's every week there was a reading that was sent to us and then we had to take a five question quiz. And you know, with five questions, you get one or two wrong, like that takes off a lot of percentage. So I really took my time, I highlighted and got all the answers from the readings and made sure that everything was good. But some people kind of rushed through it and if you don't take time on the quizzes, they can be difficult. But generally, if you try your best, you should be able to do well in the pre-lab quizzes. Going to the lab worksheets, they really weren't that difficult in my opinion. Um, and even when they were difficult, again, I would go to my TA and get help or I would go to the head lab TA and get help from her. So you'll make it. Quality of the course. Um, I enjoyed this course. Nothing too good to say, nothing too bad to say. It was a good course. I would give this a seven out of 10 too. I think the thing that makes this course stand out is the amount of help that you can get from faculty members. Professors were always ready to answer questions after class and other classes that I've taken also have professors that were ready to answer questions after class, but it felt more transactional where the professor would kind of answer the question really quickly and, you know, in a way be telling you like, get out of my face, like I've answered your question. But um, Scott and John both really like had conversations about the questions, which I guess made it take longer to get my answer sometimes, but it was good to have a good conversation with them. We would sometimes seep into their research and what they were doing, which was cool. So going along with that, TAs were always ready to answer questions. And another thing that makes this class stand out from others is that the TAs weren't undergraduate students. The TAs were postdocs, some were researchers, some were instructors. They weren't just undergraduate students who got a work study job to TA for a class. So. That's another thing that made this class stand out to me. I think my biggest complaint with this class is just that the exams felt last minute and they felt kind of low quality sometimes. I say this because almost every exam that we took, one of the professors would come in and tell us that there was an error or that there was a mistake. And you know, when you're in the middle of like a hard question that you've been thinking about for like three minutes straight and someone tells you to stop what you're doing and flip to the back of the packet and make a change or you can just put it in the back of your head and you might forget it that kind of like made the course feel you know less quality i guess it was just annoying so i guess that's my biggest gripe with the course um at least in my experience the exams felt kind of low quality and there were a lot of mistakes in them along with that exams sometimes felt like they were doing that thing where it's kind of testing your grammar more than your knowledge of biology that's another gripe that I have, but overall, I like the course. Final thoughts slash tips to succeed. So overall, Bio 101 is a doable course. Don't be scared of it, it's a doable course. The consensus around my friend group and other students at Penn is that Bio 102 is easier than Bio 101, and I full heartedly agree. My grade reflected that, and as you can see, I'm gonna put the distribution of Bio 102's first exam and the distribution of Bio 101's first exam. A little bit of a difference, right? Yeah. All right, so my tips to succeed in this class. It's important that you read ahead in this class and have good chapter summaries. This class, each exam is based on about five to seven chapters. So it's good to have a chapter summary that goes into detail about what each chapter focused on. This kind of applies to all classes, but especially this class, since there's no graded recitation, no graded homework, no graded real classwork, your grade really depends on your exam. So it's definitely important in this course. Also in this class, I would definitely recommend going to the optional recitations. Um, they're just really helpful if you have the time for it. It's just a really good chance to have a dialogue and have a little bit of discourse about biology, and it really like sticks it into your brain. Also, if you have any questions about any of the lecture material, make sure to reach out to Lori Spindler. She was the head TA for my class, and I'm not sure if she'll be it again, or if she always does it, but whoever your head TA is, reach out to her or him. 
And on the other hand, if you have any problems in lab, make sure to reach out to Linda Robinson. Um, she's the lab coordinator for this course. So if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to her. Both are very helpful resources if you ever get stuck in the course and can really push you on. So yeah. And outside of all of that, if you ever get down in Bio 101, just know that Bio 102 is easier. Facts, that's it. But yeah, thanks for watching and I hope this video helped you and I hope you succeed in Bio 101. Good luck.